Are we ready for household robots? Would you be willing to have one in your home? Provided the security was excellent and the machines were essentially unhackable, with compartmentalized functions and the ability to purge affected areas and restore themselves, they would be a welcome addition. One of the contenders for getting those bots in our homes is the software company, Tesla. Some people love Elon Musk and others hate him. He is responsible for some good quality and environmentally responsible electric cars. He's directing the development of a worldwide accessible internet service. He's making space competitive and forcing old space players to rethink their elderly or antiquated ideas about space access and be more thoughtful, economical, and innovative. He also promoted Bitcoin, saying Tesla would accept it as a form of payment, which started to drive its value up. That encouraged international banks and nations to begin to adopt Bitcoin as a legitimate currency, and it rose to new heights. Then, he and Tesla sold about 85% of their Bitcoin holdings, said Tesla would no longer accept it, and tweeted that he didn't like Bitcoin anymore. This caused Bitcoin's value to plummet by a third of a trillion dollars in just days. Consequently, banks and countries have been legislating against the DeFi currency of late, probably because many politicians got burned in the slide and are legislating misguided revenge. It's been a rough downhill ride since then for normal non-billionaire investors with all those unrealized earnings erased so quickly. Eventually, people came to their senses, stopped listening to him about Bitcoin, and now Bitcoin is recovering slowly. After all, Musk has had a couple of serious run-ins with the SEC for unethical business actions, such as deliberately misleading tweets that cost him and Tesla multi-million dollar fines, while he generated many times that an increased share in corporate value. He's mad about getting caught, too. On April 14, 2022, Reuters News reported Tesla Inc. CEO Elon Musk on Thursday stepped up criticism of the U.S. securities regulator, calling Securities and Exchange Commission officials bastards for bringing fraud charges against him over his 2018 tweets regarding taking Tesla private. Ultimately, he's a businessman trying to make money and achieve his ambitions. He's also trying to get you to buy into his dreams and goals. He's not your friend. He doesn't care about your financial well-being, and his pronouncements about the value of securities, investments, or stocks should be taken with a large grain of salt. But then there's his so-called Optimus Prime robot. If there was a suitable item manufacturer that makes a good, reliable product that you need or want, you buy the product from them. It's not a matter of politics or their personal net worth. As long as they're not trying to take over the world, kill innocent people, or increase human suffering, they're little more than a supplier of something necessary. While there are other companies working hard to make progress on household bots, the Tesla bot looks to be one of those superior items. In its final incarnation before being ready for sale to the general public at a cost of about $10,000 according to estimates, it will weigh 125 pounds, be able to carry 45 pounds, deadlift 150 pounds, navigate using the same technology that allows Tesla cars to self-drive, move at about five miles per hour, and it will be able to understand what you intend rather than just a string of words. The last is probably the most interesting. Advanced interpretive skills will allow it to understand inflections, intonations, context, and history. That means it will know how a question is different from a statement or an order. It will know that if you tell it to take the dog for a walk, that you shouldn't pick it up and carry it around the block. It will also know the activity requires that it clean up any dog byproducts and dispose of them properly during the exercise. It will remember previous inputs and decisions, so it understands what has happened in earlier interactions, allowing it to make better decisions in the future. If little Johnny comes in the house and says, can I have a rum and coke, please? <laughs> that it should not oblige the child, instead offering something more practical or allowed by the parents. Musk has already stated that he is looking to make the robot into more of a companion than a slave. It probably wouldn't take a lot of effort to make it even more, um, human compatible, let's say. That could fill a significant gap for people that don't have mates. 
Science fiction has proposed having a robot as a real companion in endless stories and movies, including emotional attachments and recognized legal marriages. The Tesla bots are what were called humaniform by science fiction writer Isaac Asimov. His logic was unassailable in that a robot designed like a human being would use human tools and infrastructure without the need to adapt. Imagine if you had to make a new kind of doorknob that could be used by robots that weren't humaniform. You would have to replace all doorknobs that robots would ever need to use and maybe teach humans how to use the new doorknob. It's much easier to build robots to use our tools. Retooling would be expensive and difficult, so we do it the efficient way, making humaniform bots. Humans, once freed from boring, mindless, repetitive labor, would be able to start building the post-scarcity society. In most science fiction, you'll find that society evolves to the point where everyone has what they need, all provided by robotic automation. There are no terrible jobs that people hate. As it stands right now, there should be 85 million jobs taken over by robots by 2030. Of course, robots themselves need management and maintenance and technology support, so it will end up creating 97 million new jobs. These are better jobs that use human abilities in a rewarding way and don't tie our intelligence to an assembly line to rot away uselessly. Think of it like Star Trek's universe where they don't use money anymore. People do the jobs that are satisfying to them, encouraging art, education, creativity of all sorts, scientific exploration, and study. There are no real rewards other than recognition for accomplishments. It's a fame instead of fortune sort of arrangement. Who needs money when everyone gets a 3D printer and all of the stock material they need to make their desires? A 3D printer is just a slower version of a Star Trek replicator. Robots have another limitation. In fact, it's one of the largest problems that exists. Our battery tech is still evolving. The accidental discovery of the new sulfur-lithium battery having three times the power density of a lithium cobalt battery, and at the very least double the lifetime, is encouraging. That one also charges much faster. With currently available batteries, many robots can only operate for 30 to 120 minutes and then take about 30% longer than their operating time to fully recharge. You could get a lot done in that amount of time, but the downtime might be inconvenient. Industrial robots like car welders are plugged in so battery life isn't a consideration. Mobile robots need these better batteries to be more useful. Do you want it to run out of power halfway around the block as it exercises your dog or go dead as it changes your baby's diaper? Could you even bring yourself to trust a robot to do important tasks like that? We will, it's inevitable, but it will take time for us to accept what robots can safely do for us. When your kitchen version of a 3D printer can print food from lab-grown proteins, cellulose, starches, sugars, fats, and flavors, you can have fresh food that was never grown in soil or inside an animal. We've already printed edible meat, seafood, and vegetables. At that point, a major problem disappears from the planet. Agriculture, which uses 45% of our fresh water, much of our arable land and plenty of chemical fertilizers can be eliminated in favor of robot crews operating commercial lab production. Virtually unsupervised, they could make feedstock for the 3D printers, eliminating a major source of greenhouse gases. Some things, like minerals, will still need to be mined by robots, keeping humans out of danger. Forests will need to be harvested and replanted to keep a steady supply of cellulose to print wooden furniture in your bigger, heavy-duty 3D printer. Sewers will need to be maintained. Water mains will need to be repaired or replaced. Highways will need to be resurfaced so all the self-driving cars can get around. Those are jobs for robots to handle, with perhaps a human or two to monitor. Of course, you won't use a humaniform robot to vacuum your house. We have vacuum robots for that already, and they probably won't build houses since we already have massive transportable 3D printers that can print 10 houses per day. Humaniform robots might do the interior finishing, run the wiring, install the plumbing, mount the windows and doors, and lay the tile or carpet. 
Maybe, ultimately, the best social function might be as companions for the lonely and workers in hostile environments. What are you willing to bet that there is a humaniform robot on Mars before the first humans get there? And how long do you think it will be before the first human-robot marriage? Hey, if you decide to separate and divorce, at least the robot won't get half of your stuff.